Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at understanding and using SVG fonts in both Illustrator and Photoshop. Now as usual I'm going to be using some Design Cuts assets in this tutorial. I'm going to be using the Opulent font here and also the Game font. But before we begin let's have a talk about what SVG fonts even are. Nothing much has happened in the font world for many, many years until these SVG fonts started to hit the market. An SVG font is a new version of an open type font format. Now what makes them different is that they contain things that fonts have never been able to contain up until now. They contain things like color information as well as transparency. So that means that you can type in color and you can also type elements that have transparency in them. In particular, the opulent font that we're going to be using, that has a sort of brush-like feel, so it's got some transparency in it. Now, there are not many of these fonts available right now. And if you're inside Illustrator or Photoshop, you can identify whether you've even got these fonts by looking at how the font is described. Now, I've got a collection here of my favorite fonts, and I've just put all my SVG fonts in here. And you'll see that they're open type fonts, and you'll see that they've got the letters SVG underneath them. Now, here in my list is Opulent. There's a couple of versions of Opulent, the SVG and some alternates, as well as the game font. And there's Trajan Color, which is a font that's actually shipped with the Adobe Suite. So you're going to have that automatically installed if you have the most recent versions of Illustrator and Photoshop. Now, while there are not a lot of SVG fonts available right now, you're going to see a lot of them come in in the future because of the ability to contain color. So these fonts are going to be particularly appropriate for, for example, emojis and other graphic elements. Now, in many respects, these fonts behave like regular fonts. So to begin with, let's have a look and see how you'd install them. So I've got the opulent font here. I've downloaded it, comes as a zip file. There's nothing magical in that. Most fonts are delivered this way. I'll double click on the zip file. Now in a PC, I need to click to extract all the files. On a Mac, that would probably be automatically happening for you. These fonts are quite large because they contain all this information. You're going to find that the font sets are quite large. Now this has expanded into a folder. So I'm going to double click on the folder and let's have a look and see what we've got. Well, we've got regular desktop fonts as well as the SVG version. And of course, that's the one we came here to look at. And here is the opulent SVG font itself and also a font file that contains alternates for the characters in that original font. Now, somewhat confusingly, you'll see a Photoshop option here. Well, what these are is all of the characters from the font delivered as a Photoshop file. So if your version of Photoshop does not support SVG fonts, you can still get access to the characters, but you're going to have to bring them in as individual images. Now that leads to the question is what versions of Photoshop and Illustrator are compatible with SVG fonts? Well, for Photoshop, it's CC 2017 and later. And for Illustrator, it's 2018 and later. So there's a very good reason to update your version of Photoshop and Illustrator if you're not using those versions so that you can get access to SVG fonts natively inside the application. So you're going to install these fonts by just double clicking on the font file. On a Mac, the dialogue is going to look a bit different to this. And you can see here that we can't actually see the font here. You just need to trust the process at this point because I'm using an older version of Windows. It's not recognizing the font, but that's fine because it's going to install it just perfectly. So I click on install and install it. Now I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do that. But you would go ahead and install it on your computer. And the process on the Mac is similar. And if you're not familiar with this process, then look out for our videos on install fonts for use in Illustrator and Photoshop here on this channel. So now that you've got an SVG font or two installed on your computer, let's see how we're going to use them. I'm going to the type tool here and I have already selected one of my SVG fonts. We're going to start with Opulent. I'm going to turn up the size here to about 200 points so that we've got a reasonable size piece of type. I'll click in the document and type the word summer. 
Now, as I said previously, these fonts behave very much like regular fonts. So if I select over the font, I can go to the character dialog and I can, for example, increase the tracking for this font. And so it's just going to spread out the characters. So all of these options in the dialog work pretty much as you would expect for any font. But the significant difference is going to be in how we recolor this particular font because Opulent, while it's an SVG font, is one that contains transparency. There's no color in this font. It's just black, but it's got transparent elements in it. So it looks as if it was written using a calligraphy brush. Now, all the tools in Illustrator that you're familiar with for recoloring fonts fail with this font. So, for example, if I go and try and change the color to pink using the fill color dialog, it doesn't work. Recolor doesn't work. Any of the tools that you're familiar with are going to fail spectacularly. So it's time to see how we can actually recolor these fonts. And the secret is to use a transparency mask. Now, if that's a little bit like voodoo to you, it's fine. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's going to be really easy. So you're going to select the rectangle tool and just drag a rectangle to fully cover your type. Fill it with the color you want to use. And so this is going to be our text color. Now we can alter it in a minute, but try and get it sort of close at this stage. We're going to move this rectangle so it's behind the type. To do that, I'll choose Object Arrange and then Send to Back. So type on the top, rectangle on the bottom. You'll select both the rectangle and the type. And then you'll open the Transparency window by choosing Window and then Transparency. At this point, all you need to do is click on this button which says Make Mask and then click on Invert Mask. And that creates this as a mask and that recolors the text. So now if we put a filled rectangle behind this, we're going to see how the transparency is working. So I'm going to fill this one with a sort of yellow color. I'll move it behind. And when we zoom in, you can see the transparency in the type. So we're seeing the yellow through it. Now all of that's going to beg the question of what if we don't like the blue color? Well, we'll go to the Layers palette so that we can locate the font element itself. And it's here. It's got the word rectangle with an underline because this is telling us that it's a transparency mask. So I'm going to select on that. Here you can see the blue color is appearing. If I double click on that, I can now change that color. So I'm going to choose this sort of pink color and that changes the color of the text. So at any point we can come back in and select this transparency rectangle. We'll see the color that the type is right now and we're able to change it. Now the second font that I downloaded is going to behave a little bit differently. Let's go and get rid of this type object and let's go and type something using the game font. So let's go and get that. Now I've just typed the word joy and you'll see that this is a multicolor font. Now for this font, none of those recolor options is going to be significantly good for recoloring this font because it really was designed to be this set of colors. The best that you could do would be to rasterize this font and then try and change the colors that way. But just be aware that some of these SVG fonts are going to be able to be recolored and would make sense recoloring. Some of them you're just going to use the color that they happen to be. Now again, I'm going to delete that because I want to show you the Trajan font which comes with the Creative Cloud versions. I'll retype the word Summer and let's go and select the Trajan color font. Now this font comes in a base color which is yellow, but it has glyphs. So let's choose Window and then Type and go and have a look at the glyphs panel. You're going to want to look at the glyphs panel for each of these SVG fonts just to see what is there. And it's going to vary according to the font that you're using. In the case of Trajan, what the glyphs are allowing us access to is different color elements. So we could isolate a single character in here. Let's isolate the capital M and I'm going to replace it with a capital M that is a different color. And so this set of glyphs contains a whole variety of different colors for this Trajan font. 
If we were to change this to our opulent, we'll see that there are not those sorts of characters available for opulent. There's just a limited character set here. In the case of opulent, if you want to see what other characters you can use, then they're in a second font file. So these are the alternates for the characters in the original font. So it will take a little bit of exploring with individual fonts to see what it is that you're getting with your SVG font files. So now we've finished in Illustrator, we're going to switch across to Photoshop because in Photoshop things are different yet again. I have a new RGB document open here in Photoshop. I'm going to the Type tool. Now I've already isolated all my SVG fonts to my favorites list, so it just makes them easy to find. I'm going to retype the word Summer here, and we're going to enlarge it. Now in the same way that we were not able to recolor this font in Illustrator the way that we're used to recoloring fonts in Illustrator, it's not going to work in Photoshop either. There are a couple of ways that you can solve this. Now one of them is to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. So what we would do is choose layer, new adjustment layer and then hue saturation. At this point we can colorize the type by clicking on colorize and then select a color for it. Now if we increase the saturation a little bit and increase the lightness, then we're going to get that transparent color effect that we were seeing, for example, in Illustrator. Now that's one method that you can use to do this, just a simple hue saturation adjustment layer. But there is another one, I'm just going to delete this layer for now and let's go and see what to do. Inside the layers panel with the type layer selected, we can go to the FX icon here and choose color overlay and we can also choose gradient overlay. So for a single color, we would choose color overlay and then we would select our color here from the color picker. You'll want to be set to normal as your blend mode and then you can adjust the opacity and as you reduce the opacity, you're going to get closer to black. So it's sort of going to dull the color if you like. So that's one of your options, a color overlay. The second option is to use a gradient overlay. Now, if it's not available in the list here, what you're going to do is to go back to the text layer, click the FX icon here and choose gradient overlay. From the gradient list here, you can select any of the gradients that you have installed in Photoshop. If you don't have a lot installed, click the gear icon and here are the gradients that are shipped with Photoshop. And of course you can go to the web and download gradients there too. But I've got quite a few gradients here, certainly plenty for this purpose. So I can select the gradient I want to use. I could edit the gradient should I wish to do so. I'm going to apply it in normal mode. I'm going to use 100% opacity or we're going to have that same issue as we had with the color overlay with it becoming more sort of grayscale as we drag down the opacity. For the style, we've got linear, radial, angle, all the options that we would typically have in Photoshop. You've got options for reversing the gradient, turning it the opposite way around, aligning it with the layer. You can change the angle for a linear gradient and you can also change the scale. So they are your basic options for recoloring these SVG fonts in Photoshop. Now with our type selected, of course, in Photoshop, we also have a glyphs panel window and then glyphs. So this is going to be similar to the glyphs panel in Illustrator. It's going to show you what is inside this font and using that makes it easy for you to replace characters, for example. Now inside Photoshop, we do get some other options for working with that game font. So I'm just going to delete this type element. Let's go back and do the game font. Now with this particular type element, because it's got lots of color in it, it really lends itself to a hue saturation adjustment layer to recolor it. So I'll choose layer, new adjustment layer, and then hue saturation. Now with this, I can alter the master channel. So if I move around on the hue slider, we're going to change all the colors in the font. And we're doing that so that we're rolling every single color into a new position. But if we wanted to just take a single color and alter it, that can be done too. So if we're looking at this sort of orangey color at the top, I can go down and select, for example, the yellows, and then I can move the yellows around. Now that's somewhat altering those. I think they're probably a little bit more perhaps in the reds. 
And so by selecting the appropriate channel, we can then rotate these colors around. So I've killed the orange and now I'm bringing in a sort of pinky purple. And I could bring in a blue, for example. So that's going to affect just individual colors in the font. So you can see here in Photoshop, there are some additional options, particularly for fonts like the game, which are filled with lots of color. I hope you enjoyed learning these techniques for working with SVG fonts in Illustrator and Photoshop. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.